Hi everyone, how are you? Thank you all for joining our first webinar about working in climate. We are super excited to have you here. And we're here, uh, we're curious to hear where you're all coming from. So please use the chat box that's on the right and you can share and introduce yourself. We already have introduced ourselves to our LinkedIn profiles, but you will hear more about us in a second. Thank you all for joining. My name is Petya. I'm originally from Bulgaria, but I live in Vermont. I'm communications uh, strategist at Clever Carbon, and I have 14 years of experience in PR, advertising, and communications. But during the last two years, I switched into climate and sustainability. Here is Moni with me. Moni, can you please introduce yourself as well? Thank you, Petia. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Moni. I'm originally from Cambodia, but I'm currently living in London. I, I am a marketing associate at Clever Carbon. Thank you, Moni. So nice to have you, the three of us here and everyone else. Before we start this presentation, I'm going to go through, quickly through the agenda. Michelle, please, can you share it on the screen? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Everyone can see the screen here. You can use the emoji uh, icon and give us a thumbs up if everything is cool with you. Yes. Thank you. Great. This is our agenda for today. And before we start, I'll go briefly through several key details. Uh, first of all, to take it off everyone's plate, we are going to uh, make this presentation available to everybody after the event today. So you'll get the deck as well as a lot of other um, useful links and resources. So don't worry about it. Enjoy the presentation. And uh, we're trying to keep the content within 30 minutes. But after that, we'll be the three of us will be available to answer questions, uh, to get your feedback, and to hear also suggestions for other future, future topics that we can um, uh, pay attention to and have other webinars in the future. Don't be shy and please ask us questions. The question uh, two is right next to the chat box on the right of the screen. So please use it. We are very interested in your questions. And um, without further ado, I will present Michelle Lee, the founder of Clever Carbon. She is here to share about her career journey, how she started her work in climate, and she is packed with a lot of useful tips and resources that I'm super excited to hear about them one more time. So Michelle, please, let's get started. Perfect. Thank you, Petia. And we are starting very, very on time because we have a lot of content today. And welcome, everyone. I am so excited to do our first webinar talking about one of my favorite topics, which is climate. I see some of my friends already in the um, audience there. Shout out to Genevieve, Tatiana, Lauren, Raquel, and a lot of um, new people. Welcome to the webinar. And I'm going to do a quick introduction. So I I'm originally from Toronto. I was born and raised there. I lived in San Francisco for about seven years, uh, London for about a year and a half. And I currently reside in New York as of January. And I spent the majority of my career working in tech. So companies like Salesforce and DocuSign, I was on the sales side as a sales engineer, and I learned a lot of really important skills. And today I spend 100% of my time working on Clever Carbon. And our goal is to raise carbon footprint literacy in a really hip and fun way. And I always like to give our team here a nice shout out because the work that we do would not be possible without every single one of them, um, past, present, and future volunteers. You can see we have a really diverse team, people from Sao Paulo to Jakarta to Copenhagen and London and Amsterdam. Um, our team is amazing and you know we do great work here. The crux of what we do at Clever Carbon is really centered around our two-minute carbon footprint quiz. 
and it's just six questions. It's really fast. It's really fun. And at the end, you get a badge where your name and your carbon footprint is um, given to you. You can download it and share it on the internet. And the idea is to get more people to understand that they have a carbon footprint. And if you're interested in learning about why that's important, uh, you can also catch our TEDx talk, which you can find very easily on our website. So I think Moni probably has already pasted the quiz on there. So that is great. So maybe today you're wondering, you know, why am I doing this webinar? Like, you know, wh what's the reason around that? And the reason I'm doing the webinar today about working in climate is, is because I'm very passionate about working in climate. And I have a lot of professionals in my network, including all of you that have joined today. And in my mind, wouldn't it be fun if all of us came together to create fun climate solutions? I think that would be super awesome. So the key takeaways from the webinar are you don't need to leave your current job to work in climate. You don't need a special degree. You can start today. So without further ado, let's get into it. So. I want to tell you my perspective of what climate is based on my journey so far, just so that we can set the stage a little bit. And really, when I think about climate, it's our population challenge. We have a lot of people on this earth, and a lot of these people on this earth like to do some of these things. Uh, we like to fly, we like to shop, we like to eat a lot, we like animal protein, we like large cars. And above all, we also really, really love convenience. And all of this is leading to a lot of consumption and maybe overconsumption. And part of that is depletion of our resources, whether it's water, uh, land that we can use to produce food, land that we can use to inhabit, it, um, inhabit it, um, just you know, minerals, everything. We're depleting those resources. And because of consumption, we're also increasing greenhouse gas emissions, we're increasing waste, and we're disrupting the natural balance uh, of the ecology of Earth. And I want to do a bit of a double click on this greenhouse gas emissions, because when we consume, we need energy. So, you know, when we fly, we need um, energy for the planes. Uh, we need electricity to manufacture our goods. So everything that we do when it comes to consumption requires energy and we get our energy from fossil fuels. So fossil fuels are actually natural to the earth from coal to natural gas to oil, but majority of the energy that we use today, especially in the past, comes from fossil fuels. And what happens is when we use fossil fuels for energy, we burn them. And when we burn them, this creates greenhouse gases. And what happens is greenhouse gases get trapped in our atmosphere and they in turn then trap heat. So this leads to the warming of our planet. We have sort of like a, uh, just like, you know, a regular uh, greenhouse. So the more gases we have, the warmer our planet. And if we just look at the greenhouse gases, there are a few types. Most of you have probably heard of carbon dioxide. When we burn fossil fuels, we mostly generate a lot of carbon dioxide. But there are also other greenhouse gases. There is methane, which um, cattle production produces a lot of methane. Um, food waste in landfills produces a lot of methane. So um, think about composting. And nitrous oxide also produces a lot of greenhouse gases and not all of, their, all of them are created equal. So methane, for example, is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And nitrous oxide is 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And if we think about that a little bit more, we can then look at what sectors are emitting the most greenhouse gases? And you can see on the right-hand side here, these are the sectors. And as Petia mentioned, we will be sending out the, all of the links afterwards. So don't um, you know, worry about capturing them now, but let's do a bit of a double click on these sectors, right? So when it comes to uh, electricity and heat production, 
you know, the reason why we're seeing a lot of uh, focus on, for example, renewable energy, nuclear energy, is because this sector produces a lot of greenhouse gases. So we're looking for ways to reduce greenhouse gas production. Hydrogen is another fuel source that people are working on, and heat pumps as well is a more efficient way to produce heat. Now, the agriculture sector actually produces a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emissions as well, like almost 25% of global uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that's why you're seeing a lot around regenerative agriculture, vertical agriculture, and even focus on things like plant-based alternatives uh, to reduce um, animal, um, uh, I guess, cultivation. And last one here that I want to point out is, you know, transportation definitely produces a lot of greenhouse gas emissions as well. So there's huge focus on electric vehicles, um, buses, trucks, trains, um, probably even planes at some point. And there are even organizations like EV100 that are essentially helping large companies commit to a electrical fleet by 2030. So companies like Siemens, Ikea, for example, uh, they have all committed to EV100, so converting their fleet to electric so that it's better from a emission standpoint. So hopefully, you know, we've gone through a little bit about, you know, what is climate? What is the challenge? What are some of the sectors? And that kind of gives you a sense of where uh, climate work exists. But now I want to do a little bit more of a double click on, you know, what does it mean to work in climate? What kind of company do you have to work for? What kind of role do you need to be doing to be working in climate? So I'm going to start with sort of the very obvious companies, um, WWF, Greenpeace, United Nations. They all have really large climate arms where people are essentially raising awareness, they're coming up with new climate policies to help combat uh, climate change and to help reduce emissions. And then there are also a lot of other nonprofits that exist as well. And the Solutions Project is a nonprofit that fights climate justice. And the board of directors actually has Mark Ruffalo, the actor on it, um, Veganuary is another uh, nonprofit, and you know this is interesting because what Veganuary does is you know they encourage people to have a plant-based diet, but there is a sort of animal rights, uh, animal uh, you know no animal cruelty lens to it, but there's also a climate lens to it because animal production produces so much greenhouse gases. If we all ate a plant-based diet or ate more plant-based meals, we would actually be reducing emissions. So maybe when you think veganuary, you don't think climate, but actually it's you know 100% when I look at it, I think veganuary is climate. There's also nonprofits like Rocky Mountain Institute, World Resources Institute. They do a lot of work around research and data, which is vital to you know combating climate change. We need to be able to measure, we need to be able to come up with new technologies in order to reduce emissions. So maybe not something that you've heard about or think about in terms of you know nonprofits, but these companies play a very important role in fighting climate change. So absolutely if you're working for them, you're working in climate. Now uh, companies that are working on new technologies, um, you would absolutely be you know working in climate. And Climeworks is a really interesting company. So when we think of that pie, right, there was um, electricity and heat and agriculture. So there's different slices of the pie. What Climeworks does kind of applies to the whole pie because what they're trying to do is remove uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because not only are we producing carbon dioxide now and it's going into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide from 50 years ago, from 100 years ago, some of it is still in the atmosphere. So we need to actually remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order to lessen the greenhouse gas effect. And their technology works on converting carbon dioxide and essentially converting it into a form underground where it's stored as a stone and therefore it can escape and it's um, you know hopefully safe. High Point is another company. They're working on commercializing hydrogen fuel cells. So that also addresses the sort of electricity and the energy portion of the pie chart. And Mirico is a company that is doing research around using hemp for cement production because 
Cement production is actually a very significant um, source of carbon emissions. So finding ways to lower the emissions in construction and building um, is definitely an area uh, of interest for a lot of investors. So I would say, you know, if you're working at Climeworks, whether you're in HR or you are, you know, in accounting uh, or maybe an engineer, you're absolutely working in climate. Now, other types of companies are VC firms or private equity, and there are so many different companies when it comes to VC firms, new technologies. I can't possibly list them all here, but there are some examples. And wondering if anyone knows who actually uh, established Breakthrough Energy, feel free to type that into the chat and Footprint Coalition as well. Um, I'll sort of uh, tell you guys who established Breakthrough Energy. It's Bill Gates. He established it in 2015, and they uh, provide funding for clean and new energy uh, technologies and companies. And the Footprint Coalition was actually founded by Robert Downey Jr. So he's actually very active in um, you know, climate change. And I love that all these celebrities are getting involved, including Mark Ruffalo, who I also just mentioned previously. Uh, my friend Tiffany knows both of those dudes, which is awesome. So if you're working at a VC firm, uh, you know, specifying in, in climate technologies, yeah, you're absolutely working on climate. Now, Business services is another area where, um, you know, there's a lot of companies kind of focusing on climate change because in order to understand the emissions, you have to first measure them. So these companies here are small startups that help companies measure their carbon emissions. And um, Green Boy Consulting, they also help companies with B Corp certification, which is really awesome. But this is where the line starts to get a little blurry, right? They are not the only companies that help companies measure emissions or do carbon accounting. Very traditional companies like KPMG, Deloitte, EY, they help companies measure emissions as well and do ESG accounting. So if you work at KPMG, if you work at Deloitte, do you work in climate? You know, maybe it depends on what role or what project you're working on. Now, what if you work at a company called Oatly, right? Maybe um, most people have heard about Oatly. They manufacture a oat milk, which is from a carbon emission standpoint, significantly lower than dairy milk. So if you work at Oatly, are you working in climate? Or maybe if you work at Just Salad. So Just Salad is a fast, casual restaurant chain. They provide a reusable bowl option. So you could potentially have um, no waste when going to this uh, you know, fast food chain. They also carbon label their menu. So you can understand the carbon footprint of each item on their menu and make a decision. So if you work at Just Salad, are you working in climate? You know, Then... There is this cafe in Oakland. It's a zero waste cafe. So they do not allow customers to use any disposables, no plastic cups or lids or straws. And you know, if you work at this bookstore or if you're the owner of this bookstore uh, slash coffee shop, do you work in climate? And I would absolutely say yes, yeah, why not? And then maybe you're a little bit confused about why I have these two companies. You know, Microsoft, they are a software company. Um, FedEx, they are a shipping company. But if you do a quick search on LinkedIn, you'll see that you know, Microsoft has almost 186,000 employees. 145 of these individuals have titles with sustainability. And same thing with FedEx. There's a lot of employees and also a number of employees that have titles with sustainability. So the picture that I'm trying to paint here is that climate work comes in many shapes and forms, and really you can do climate work at any company. So how do we get started? That is the million dollar question. So I have sort of three tips that I uh, think are really helpful. And we're gonna start with understanding the climate challenge. So we already started this journey today, learning about greenhouse gas emissions, learning about the different sectors that are producing a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, but there's a lot more to learn. There's things around policy, there's education, um, 
you know, greenhouse gases are not the only reason why we have climate change. There are other reasons why as well. So when it comes to learning about that, obviously we have books, podcasts, and documentaries. And on the book side, personally, one of the first books I read in climate was by Chris Goodall. It's called What We Need to Do Now. And it's an excellent book. It's very easy to understand, but it's also very thorough. I highly recommend that book. Bill Gates also recently came out with his climate book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster. I read it um, <laughs> through um, an Audible book, and it was a very um, easy read, and I learned a lot of things as well. And we've got a link there because at Clever Carbon, we have a book club where we read books, and we always give you some uh, key takeaways. So you can actually... Um, Again, we'll have these links after, but you can go check out our Instagram and see our key takeaways on the books and what books we're reading. There's also podcasts. There are many, many different climate podcasts. A quick search will show you um, all the ones that you need to know. I particularly really like In Good Hands. It's hosted by Peter Levin. He's native, uh, he's in New York, and he interviews you know, startup founders, policymakers, and he's a really engaging host. And Clever Carbon is also In Good Hands alumni. So Peter interviewed myself and we have an episode on In Good Hands as well. So be sure to check that out. And then documentaries, obviously, you know, I love that Netflix is producing a lot of great content around that. We watch them. We do some key takeaways as well. Um, Seaspiracy and Kiss the Ground are two that come to mind that uh, are recent ones that are really good. Also, My Octopus Teacher is wonderful. And in addition to those resources, uh, there's also courses you can take. On the left-hand side, that's a, a course that I took on Coursera, Introduction to Sustainability. It was like a, a eight-week online course, but it was very, very thorough in terms of like helping me understand, oh, it's like the population change. Oh, there's carbon trade markets and, um, you know, very, very great course, easy to understand, highly recommend that. After you finish, you get a LinkedIn certificate as well, which is also really great. And then on the other side, there are courses that are more specific to how to apply sustainability from a business perspective. So there are some um, universities that offer that. And then there are also events. COP26 is um, a really big event coming up in October. It is probably one of the most highest regarded climate conferences. And I will say that it's probably more geared towards like government and policy, but there's also uh, something for everyone. So I would encourage you to go through the links there um, and see what interests you. On the right hand side, Climate Week New York is also coming up. And there are a number of virtual and in-person events. So even if you're not in New York, you can um, look at the different events there. And we actually put out a recent LinkedIn article where we curated some of our top picks. Um, so, you know, whether you're working in legal now or you're interested in supply chain or accounting for climate or even, you know, does tree planting really help save the planet? Be sure to check out that link. Um, Moni has already copied it into the chat. Thank you, Moni. We are also doing an event for Climate Week that's virtual, um, very similar to this. It's gonna be 30 minutes, but it's going to be about what's my carbon footprint. So as you start learning more about, uh, you know, climate in general, carbon footprint is really great. Uh, it's basically like the buzzword of, um, of the year. So be sure to tune into that, it is free. Now, the next tip that I have is to build your community. And I didn't know this until recently, but there are a lot of Slack communities that you can join. So I have six of them already here. And my climate journey is um, the one that I started with. And you can see here, uh, there's topics from climate careers, climate investing, climate jobs, and there's even local chapters. So in New York, we organize monthly happy hours and half the people are already working in climate and half the people are people aspiring to work in climate. So a really great way to get involved and start networking with people in climate, whether you're already working there or not. And um, I was looking through the, uh, you know, what everyone wanted to take away from today. And 
uh, I saw sort of networking come up a lot. So we actually decided to create a group where people can start their climate journey. It can be intimidating when you're in a group full of experts and you're like, what, what do these terms mean? Like what, like, it, it can be overwhelming. So we created this group to make it a little bit more accessible um, for people that are new to climate, to share resources, ask questions, et cetera. So be sure to join that. Um, and Moni, let's put that one in there. And then the last part is, you know, you can start working in climate today. So one of the first things that you can do is volunteer. And that was definitely a part of my climate journey. I volunteered for a local plastic free organization. So they organize, you know, litter picks um, in the area. They produce content on Instagram about, you know, plastic, et cetera. And I worked for them for almost five months. So if you're really passionate about, you know, getting into climate, that's definitely a great place to start. But even at your company today, you know, today, Today, you can start doing something about climate and you can start working in climate. And one of the first things that you can do is start a sustainability chat channel, whether it's on Slack or Teams, or even if you just have a forum, um, that's a great way where people can share tips, they can share articles, vegan recipes, um, you know, pictures of vegan food. Those are all great things. Um, and if you don't know, if you have a chat channel, another thing you can do is, you know, look for it. And we also have a service called Clever Conversation Starters. So every Monday we have a different chat topic that you can copy and paste into your chat channel. And they mimic water cooler conversations like, you know, what's your favorite music festival? And then we have some answers for you, but we also have some tips on how to be more sustainable at a music festival, for example. And um, if your company doesn't have one already, you can start a sustainability team or employee resource group. We have a LinkedIn article giving you some tips on how to get that done. So be sure to grab this from our um, resources page. And then there's also different ways that you can incorporate it into your work. So for example, um, let's say you work for Uber, right? Um, your current product or service, Maybe there's a way for you to incentivize drivers who are looking to purchase a new vehicle to purchase an electric vehicle, you know, just something very simple. Or, you know, if you work at Uber, you've got a kitchen, you probably got some toothpaste and great bathroom amenities. Um, how can we find amenities that have less, uh, you know, single use items, less plastic, um, maybe more vegan items for, for the kitchen, etc.? That's a really simple thing to do. If you have company or customer events, um, how can we reduce the amount of, you know, swag that's really not needed or offer more vegan items or look for vendors, um, for example, caterers that um, don't use single use waste um, and even getting our executives involved, you know, sending them articles, asking them if they know their carbon footprint. Uh, not everyone has access to executives into the C-suite, but if you happen to, um, that's something very powerful you can do. Like, hey, CEO, do you know your carbon footprint? Like very simple question and just send along our link to them. And we're gonna put a quick plug in. I also do a carbon footprint team building event. So instead of a magic show or instead of you know a virtual escape room, you can hire me or book me to do a fun session. We do pop quizzes, we play music, we do some breakout sessions. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, these are some of the companies that I've done them with. Um, Digit is a company based out of San Francisco. Digit had such a great time with Clever Carbon. It was informative and engaging, great way to connect with uh, for remote team members. So definitely uh, putting that on your radar as well. And, you know, if you have a specific skill set, like maybe you work in accounting or maybe you work in HR and recruitment, um, you know, it's kind of really easy for you to look at some of the companies there and see if they're hiring for those types of roles. But another way that you can approach the job search is to look for companies that you're passionate about. Look for areas that you're passionate about. Are you passionate about renewable energy? Are you passionate about plant-based eating? And find those companies and look at the jobs, you know, what kind of roles are they hiring for? Do you have the right skill sets for those roles? If not, can you beef up your skill set by volunteering? 
can you in the meantime connect with recruiters or other individuals from that company to start sort of planting the seed and building your network there? Um, there are going to be some job summits as a part of Climate Week NYC, so make sure you get those on your calendar if you're curious to see what kind of roles are there. And that's really it. Wow, we uh, right at the mark, we're at 328. Um, but in summary, I hope that everyone took away today that to work in climate, you don't need to leave your current job, you don't need a special degree, you can start today, and we can all have fun coming up with climate solutions together. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions or feedback at all, my email is there. Um, additionally, we're gonna drop in this link where you can get um, a copy of the slides with links. Uh, we would love your feedback because this is our first webinar. Um, so your feedback would be really great. And you can also buy us a coffee on our website. Um, again, we have a lot of volunteers that do hard work. We've got software, et cetera, that we pay for. So a coffee would be much uh, appreciated. And you can also follow us on all of our social channels, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And yeah, we're here to stick around for any question and answer. And if you want to follow up via email or LinkedIn, that's fine as well. So I'll open the floor. Thank you, Michelle. That was super informative, and I hope that uh, our guests found it uh, helpful too. Now we'll uh, focus on the questions, and Moni will help with the moderation of the questions. Thank you, Katia. Um, okay, so we have a question from Erica. Uh, the question is, if I can do one thing to make the largest impact possible, what should that be? Oh, that is... Um, a very good question, but also a bit of a tough question. But if you are a homeowner, um, one of the things that you can do is look for ways to reduce your energy bill. And there are companies out there that will do an assessment of your house. They'll look at, you know, do you have tree coverage? Because if not, you could potentially leverage more solar power. Um, you know, what kind of heat pump are you using, et cetera? Let me see if I can, there we go. Um, I'm just gonna copy this link in here. Because our homes use so much energy, whether it's you know air conditioning or whether we're using the oven or you know drying our clothes, um, you know, getting an assessment of our energy is a great way to reduce our footprint. And I would also say, you know, starting to have more plant-based meals can have a big impact as well. You can see, you know, our global emissions, 25% of them um, is from agriculture and, you know, our food. So looking into plant-based options is a great way to also get started. Erica, I hope that answers your question. Um, so a question from Naomi, um, I'm interested in uh, moving into the recycling industry in some way. Any more tips for networking and making connections with folks in that industry? Yeah, you can probably find um, a group on LinkedIn that focuses on recycling. And once you get into the Slack groups, there will, there will probably be people who can also refer you. Um, I am not that dialed into the recycling industry specifically, but um, I do know a company called TerraCycle that does some interesting work around consumer packaging. So just something to look at as well, Naomi. Thank you. Um, from Geneve. Hey, Michelle, you had mentioned that one of the issues really stems from our growing populations. Do you know if hospitals or pharma also have strong ESG or climate-related initiatives? Um, 
we hear a lot of initiatives and partnerships from traditional corps, but I'm not sure if our hospitals also have them, for example, in using solar energies. You are so right, Genevieve. I actually, hospitals don't really come up much in the climate conversations that I've been taking part in or you know, hearing about in podcasts. I think that's a really great area to explore more. Sorry, I don't have more information for you right now, but yeah, it's a really good point. I think as, um, you know, COVID is happening now and, you know, people are using more and more gloves as well. I think the last time I went to the dentist, they used about like five different pairs of latex gloves in one, in one sitting. And I was, I was majorly hurting, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> um, I have a question related to uh, the energy as well. You know, there are so many um, alternative clean energy sources. Do you have uh, like an opinion on which one is like the best? Yeah, I mean, renewable energy is very tricky. One of the problems that people are trying to solve is the fact that you can't always count on sun, you can't always count on wind. And so many times you need a combination. In addition, um, sometimes there's a surplus, right? So sometimes it's really sunny. So how do you store that energy for later use? And that's kind of where hydrogen cells come in a little bit as well. Um, I can't say that I have, um, like, I think one is really better than the other. And as we continue, um, the technology is always improving. Um, I think what's important is that we have renewable sources, which is really great. And also some clean energy sources like hydrogen and nuclear power as well. Great. Um, Tiffany asked, for those, uh, for those of us that aren't ready to commit our full-time work to climate, what companies or programs do you think are best for those of us who want to volunteer an hour or two a week? Great question. Yeah, I think it's best to start local and a great place to find those is actually on Instagram. Um, I actually was not on Instagram for a good three years until I started Clever Carbon. And then all of a sudden I had to really get on Instagram because that's where a lot of local uh, organizations uh, post their content. So I would go on Instagram and look up, um, you know, wherever you are, you know, New York climate or what, whatnot, you'll find probably a lot of different accounts. And also if you just find an account that you really like and maybe they have uh, a couple thousand followers or less, I feel like those are the kinds of organizations that could use really an extra boost. Um, I do remember that when I was living in London, Friends of the Earth was very active in individual communities. Um, I don't know if that's the case in the States, but that might be another great place to start as well. Thank you. If any of you has any more questions, you can either type it in, type it in the chat or use the question function um, there as well. Do we have more questions? Amazing. So we will be having more of these sessions as well so definitely stay tuned follow us on linkedin and uh, join the linkedin group we'll definitely post our content there um and looks like we have <laughs> Genevieve, uh do you know if schools are integrating this subject more into their curriculums yeah yeah absolutely i think schools are um my what's the the content that schools give is a lot of the times like sometimes more on the technical side um i can't say exactly because i'm dating myself i haven't been in school for a long time um but you know i went to halt international business school and as alumni we get to take one free course every year and this year i actually got to take a course in carbon accounting 
So that was really cool, just, you know, understanding how companies measure their carbon emissions. Um, but that's like very technical. Uh, I wish that there was more content that was like more practical for everyday type of use. Um, that's kind of what we're going to be doing more for our carbon footprint session uh, for New York Climate Week. But there are courses and then there are also like certificates or minors and degrees. So, you know, Genevieve, I can very confidently say that there, there's definitely curriculum out there. Thank you. I know we've also su suggested a, a webinar on carbon accounting. I'm also in for that. I want to hear that as well. Okay. Awesome. We'll get that organized. And now I just get to chat with my friends like Tiffany, Genevieve, and Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? So, thank you guys for <laughs> attending. And again, feel free to connect with us and give us feedback. That's really important to us. Um, what we did uh, well, what you liked, where we can improve, and maybe even some topics that you're interested in. And yeah, stay tuned. Let's all work on climate and create fun climate solutions together and spread the word. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Expect our presentation and recording of this webinar very, very soon to your email. Thank you all. We're looking forward to contact the, on all social media. Oh, and you Thank can buy you. this copy in the link. Thanks, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Work on climate today. <laughs>